talk to you. Hey, good morning, Christ alive! So good to be together on this rainy Sunday morning. I uh, hope you grabbed your cup of coffee, tea, or just water, or maybe oranges, and joining us this morning for worship. I just would like to open with a word of prayer, invite us uh, to in the presence of God this morning to worship wherever we are this morning. God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come and uh, be a blessing to commune and worship we invite your presence, Holy Spirit, come and speak to us through the songs, through the message. Bless this virtual gathering, Father. Bless everyone in their homes, whatever they're, they're, uh, they're watching this video right now or later on, Father. Let your presence be real. Let your truth ever changing. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's worship.
this wonder Cause there's so much to discover New dimensions of your glory And I've only seen a glimpse keep drawing me, you keep drawing me closer to your heart. You keep calling me, you keep calling me closer to your
the sinners who have been redeemed take your place beside the Savior sit down and be set free he said come to the table come join the sinners who have been redeemed take your place beside the Savior sit down and be set free come to the table started on the outside the outside looking in this is where grace begins we were hungry we were thirsty with nothing left to give all the shape that we were in then just when all hope seems lost Love opened the door for us He said, come to the table Come join the sinners who have been redeemed Take your place beside the sinners Sit down and be set free Come to the table Come meet this motley crew of misfits These liars and these thieves There's no one unwelcome here So that sin and shame you brought with you You can leave it at the door And let mercy draw you near oh, Come to the table Come join the sinners who have been redeemed Take your place beside the sin Sit down and be set free Come to the table To the thief and to the doubter To the hero and the coward to the prisoner and the soldier To the younger, to the older All who hunger, all who thirst All the last and all the first All the paupers and the princes All who failed, you've been forgiven All who dream and all who suffer All who've loved and lost another All the chained and all the free all who follow, all who lead Anyone who's been let down All the lost you have been found All who've been labeled right or wrong Anyone who hears this song He says, come to the table Come join the who have been redeemed Take your place beside the Savior Sit down and be set free Come to 
come to the table hey what a wonderful time of worship we thank our worship team for leading us in worship this morning I want to thank sammy for mixing the sound and all of you joining in this morning it's so good to be together I uh, just want to spend a little bit of time and give you a couple of updates. Uh, yesterday, our food pantry served in the community. We're such a blessing to be able to uh, feed so many families and make a difference. And, you know, just being salt and light and expressing the love of God to our community and walking through, you know, the fog and making the most and just uh, meeting the need that is in the community. And a thank you to the volunteers, everyone coming out and serving on Friday receiving the food, making the bags. Yesterday, being here to get, hand out the bags, and uh, we just give the, uh, to God be the glory. God bless you, and thank you for investing and coming out and allowing yourself to be used by God. I'm sure you continue to uh, await you know, uh, news on the progress we're making with the AC. Once again, due to COVID, due to the pandemic, uh, you know, everything is backed. It just, there's, at this point, honestly, church, uh, as we're praying and believing God, but I think the prudent and the wise thing, as we have consulted with the uh, AC companies, uh, apparently they're waiting on, in terms of production, they're waiting on, uh, you know, CDC guidelines for filtration, for security. So since we're making an investment of money, it's going to be a good amount of money, probably upwards of $20,000. Um, we are going to wait and pro uh, we're going to install the AC system uh, coming Mar March, provided that it's available. So we'll leave it for next year. We're going to wait until it cools off. We're going to see what in September we will go back into in-person meetings. So please be posted. We'll make arrangements for that. Maybe we'll do some an outdoor service. Uh, you know, so please uh, stay up to date. Watch the, uh, the services, uh, the text messages, the emails, the social media. So talk about social media. You can uh, follow us on social media, you know. And, uh, you know, you can go on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And please give like and share and follow and all that good stuff. So help us to, to spread the message. And we appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for all those of you that are faithful in this time in giving and your generosity. The Bible says those who refresh others let themselves be refreshed. And we thank you that, you know, you, you remain faithful in investing in the local church, being the local church. So we thank you. Right now you will have a link on your screen how to give, you can text to give, you can you know, go online, you can mail it in at an address, you can drive by, drive it in the mailbox, and we thank you. Father, I just pray over the people you know, for the generosity, I pray that people prosper in spite of the season we are. I pray that you just bless the families and bless the church, bless your people as they continue walking in trust and obedience to your word, God. Amen. Uh, our Wednesday night services with Pastor Bob wrapped up last Wednesday. We're going to take a break until the fall. Um, I think that's about it for uh, announcements. If I forget, I may see some of you at 11.45. This morning, as announced last Sunday and the text message went out last night, for those of you that, are, that feel comfortable, come out, a meet and greet, reconnect, no refreshments, no bagels, I'm sorry, bring your own cup of coffee, a bottle of water, and we just want to spend half an hour just reconnecting with each other, seeing each other in person. We missed, uh, we missed you. Um, uh, so uh, that being said, you know, just once again, I know it's rainy. If you don't feel comfortable coming out, we understand. Stay safe. Take the appropriate precaution, uh, precautionary me measure for you and your family. You know what's best for you. But when you come, please wear a mask. You have a hand sanitizer. It will be all around uh, the, the church. Right at the entrance, there is a hand sanitizer. So... Maintain social distance. Just be prudent and wise. It's not that we're scared or afraid or not walking in faith. Just, you know, in times like this, all eyes are on us and we want to be prudent. We don't want to give enemy, you know, uh, ammo unnecessarily. So let's be wise. Let's come together. Let's connect and reconnect and let's have a good time. So for those of you that are coming out, look forward to seeing you. For those that are not able, we miss you and we love you and we pray for each every one of you. That being said, let me invite you to continue week two of Right Side Up Living with Pastor Bob. And the to, uh, today's topic is humility. Good morning, everybody. We are continuing our series on Right Side Up Living today. And what I want to look at now is a very important idea 
of humility. So uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for giving us this time together. Help me to communicate your truth to all those who are going to see this message. Be with us, O oh God. Challenge us in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, this idea of humility is really very countercultural, uh, very upside down. If you think about it, self-promotion is really the way of the world. When I was a young man, Muhammad Ali was declaring, I am the greatest. And I read just the first couple of sentences, actually, of a very positive article recently about Sean Combs. He goes, goes by, I think, like a dozen other names. But the point is that uh, the article, again, in a very positive light, was saying that Sean Combs is the greatest self-promoter who ever lived. And so the idea of self-promotion and pride uh, is everywhere. It's in sports, it's in, in entertainment, and it's in politics. And it's completely upside down. In Matthew 23, verse 12, Jesus says, Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And I have to tell you, that I, I really believe, believe that most people don't want to be humble. I mean, you might think it's a great idea on a Sunday morning or it's a good character trait, but if you had to choose uh, between being great and being, hum being humble, I think most people would take greatness. And one of the key points I want to make in this message here is that Jesus does not tell us that the two are opposite. Either you've got to be humble or great. What he says is that the way to greatness is upside down. And so that's what I want to look at now, but let me just make one point very briefly, and that is that humility isn't the same as being humiliated. People are going to come into your life, they'll embarrass you, they'll put you down, they will humiliate you. Uh, humility, however, is a choice that we make many times a day. Every conversation is a test. Will I exalt myself? Or will I humble myself? Every relationship is a test. Every decision you make is a test. And so what I want to look at now are four times in the Bible, four circumstances, where Jesus essentially says that if you exalt yourself, you'll be humbled. And if you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. And there are four tests. And so the tests today, four of them are the ambition test, the recognition test, the comparison test, and the godliness test. So let's start with the ambition test. So Matthew chapter 18 opens with, if you can envision it, it's actually sort of amusing. Here's Jesus, God incarnate, walking on the road with, uh, with the disciples. And I sort of envision them sort of trailing behind the greatest human being who ever lived. And what are they doing? They're arguing among themselves who's the greatest. And so Jesus turns to them and he says in Matthew 18, verse 4, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And I'll tell you, I've alluded to this before, uh, just a couple of minutes ago, that the ambition test is not you've got to deny your ambition. As a matter of fact, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, that's a fantastic idea point is that you've got to do it the right way, right side up. And it starts with being like a child. So let me explain how this test works. Exalting yourself is simply being demanding, sort of like the disciples, demand to be first. And, and that can work in a lot of circumstances in our culture. In a restaurant, if you don't like the food or if it isn't being brought out fast enough, you demand better service and often you'll get it. Uh, if you're uh, in a store and you can't find the right size, the right color, whatever, you demand from the workers that they get you what you want, and again, it'll often work. It can even work in big, bigger issues. There are plenty of good business people out there who can, in essence, demand wealth. They demand work from their employees and so on, and they get it. The problem is that you cannot demand the most important things in life. That relationships work, peace, joy. And Jesus says that if you want that, you need the humility of a child because children are great at depending. 
Children don't worry about money. They don't fear the storm. They don't uh, get anxious about whether or not they're going to put tr their trust in their parents, whether they can depend on them. They just do it. It's how they're wired. And very honestly, we're the very same way. God wired us to depend on him for everything, every part of our life. Um, depending on God for your needs. Financial, emotional, physical, relationship, relational. That's the way God created you. And so again, I want to make sure you understand that this is not about giving up your ambitions. Matter of fact, that's often laziness. Think about it. In the Bible, Moses led millions of people out of Egypt. That's quite a bit of ambition. Paul took the gospel to the entire known world. Jesus came into the world to redeem all of humanity. That's uh, fairly ambitious. And now God wants us to be responsible for this world and to reflect him to the world, but to do it from the point of view of dependency on him rather than demanding that other people listen to us or obey us. Plus, when we do live our lives that way in dependency on God, it brings peace, security, rest. So that's the ambition test, number one. Then comes the recognition test. Um, this is in Matthew chapter 23. In verses 11 and 12, Jesus says, The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And so Jesus here is speaking to a crowd of people who are all struggling to be noticed. I started out talking about how this idea is in sports, it's in entertainment, it's in politics. Everybody out there is fighting for attention, fighting to be noticed. And now the test again is that if you exalt yourself, what it means is that you need others' notice versus humility, which means you notice others' needs. Think about that. Exalting yourself means that you need others' notice. If you meet, notice others' needs, that's what humility is. And so Jesus gets specific about this in Matthew 23. He's speaking again to the crowds, and he warns them about three things that the Pharisees do to exalt themselves. It's in Matthew 23 again, verses 5 through 7. They, speaking of the Pharisees, do all their deeds to be seen by others, right? to be recognized. For they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogue, and greetings in the marketplace and being called rabbi by others. So what are the three things that the, Jesus talks about here? Well, I'll give you what, what I'm going to call it in a minute, but the first thing we read is that they like to broaden their phylacteries. What's that all about? Well, in the Law of Moses, it says that we are to bind God's law on our forehead. And we believe that that's a metaphor for keeping the, the law of God and God himself in the front of our mind all the time, thinking about him, meditating on him, meta memorizing scriptures, and so on. But the Pharisees took it literally. So they took this box, that's the phylactery, they put pieces of the parts of the law written in the, uh, on paper in the box, and then they literally bound that box to their forehead in order to be noticed by people. And in order to be noticed even more, they kept making the, the boxes bigger and bigger. You see, the idea that, is that the phylacteries symbolized the entire law, but it didn't really mean that they kept the law. They just wanted everybody to notice their symbols. And let's be honest, we don't have, I don't think there are too many of us who wear phylacteries today, at least not in the church. Uh, but we do love our symbols. Uh, and that's the first ask thing that Jesus is talking about. To be noticed, we want our symbols. You might not say it to anybody, but you sort of hope that they notice the symbol that's on your clothes or on your accessories. DG, Dolce & Gabbana, the picture of the coach for coach, or maybe Prada, which unfortunately is not the same as Prada, or we'd be in much better financial shape. Uh, um, or maybe you get a car with that symbol that you've been dreaming of, and you just think everybody else notices it because of your symbol. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then they love the place of honors. 
What they're talking about now is simply they love to be recognized. People come up to them and see them in the marketplace and, and say, oh, it's so good to see you. We're so uh, thrilled that you're here. They have to be recognized. And then the third is titles. They love to be called rabbi. Uh, they feel important maybe today because of letters after your name. Do you need to be noticed by others? That's exalting yourself. And if you do, you'll be humbled. Or do you notice others' needs? That's humility. And if you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. So let me suggest that tomorrow or next week or whatever, at work, when you're out shopping, wherever you might find yourself, that you look around and try to find needs and meet them just because Jesus asks us to. Not because you're being humble so God will exalt you. That's not true humility. It's because Jesus gave everything to us. And now, out of love for him, we love our neighbor as we love ourselves, or we try to. Then the third time that Jesus says, uh, uh, if you humble yourself, you'll be exalted, and if you exalt yourself, you'll be humbled, is the comparison test. Uh, everybody, if you think about it, every, many, many, many people have this tendency to compare themselves and as far as humility is concerned, we almost universally uh, equate being first with being great. And in our culture, uh, this isn't totally politically correct, but it's, uh, it's much more common among men than women. Guys especially, we're always looking at this person or that person, wondering, am I ahead of them or am I behind them? Who's smarter? Who's funnier? Who's got a nicer looking car? And nothing will kill your joy faster than comparing yourself. And so in the scripture today, Jesus was at a dinner party and he saw everybody scrambling for the best, the most honored seats. And so in Luke chapter 14, verses uh, 10 and 11, he says, When you are invited to a dinner party, go and sit in the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Now notice here that Jesus does not say, be satisfied, you know, suck it up, but you'll be, you'll be okay if you get stuck at the lowest seat. He says, go out and take it. And then as you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. So uh, what's going on here? What is Jesus saying? I mean, I, I would gladly take the lowest seat if, every time I, if I knew every time I did it, I was going to get the best. What's Jesus getting at? Well, he's talking about being exalted by God, and that is not about where you sit. When God exalts you, you know him, you love him, you're at peace, and you're content wherever you are because you know he's got a plan for you. And that's why you can always be about the other person. Whether he's next to you at the bottom or next to you at the top, it doesn't matter. Paul says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Or as Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. And then the last fourth test is the godliness test, probably the most important one. And so in Luke chapter 18, Jesus tells the story of two very, very opposite people who go up to the temple to pray. A Pharisee and a tax collector. Now, tax collectors were uniformly hated because they weren't like just working stiffs at the IRS today. These were people who were hired by Rome. They were Jewish people who essentially extorted money from other Jews. The deal was if Rome said, we want a I'm making numbers up here, but if we want $1,000 taxes from that person, they could get as much money as they could. They said, you have to pay $5,000. And if you, maybe they'd bargain and get them down to three. Point is, they got to pocket two and they still paid Rome $1,000. So they were, again, uniformly, pretty much uniformly hated. Then there were the respected Pharisees, the keeper of the law, the guys with the phylacteries on their forehead. And so they both, the tax collector and the Pharisee, go up to the temple to pray one day. And the Pharisee is very proud of himself and he's saying to God, I thank you, God, that I'm not like other people, liars and cheats and swindlers or even that tax collector over there. 
I fast uh, twice a week and I pray, I pay tithes on all that I get. And meanwhile, the tax collector is just beating his breast and saying, wouldn't even look up to heaven, just God be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus concludes his story in verse, uh, uh, chapter 18, verse 14. When the two men went home, it was the tax collector and not the Pharisee who was pleasing to God. If you put yourself above others, if you exalt yourself, you will be put down, you'll be humbled. But if you humble yourself, you will be honored, you'll be exalted. And let me explain this works with our regard to our relationship with God. Exalting yourself is basically thinking that you can please God on your own strength, by your own good works. Isn't that exactly what the Pharisee was doing? I'm not like other people, liars and cheats, I fast, I give tithes, and so on. Alternatively, hum humility is relying on God's grace, his unmerited favor, the fact that he loves you just because of you. And that's what the tax collector did, and if you recall what I read, it said it was the tax collector who pleased God. And let me try to explain how easy it is to confuse these ideas here and, and get it upside down. Uh, let's sort of set up an, an imaginary scale here, and all the way to my right are people who really throw themselves on the mercy of God. They understand that they have nothing apart from him, nothing uh, to thy cross, to, nothing to thy throne do I bring, simply to thy cross do I cling. They're aware of their absolute need for God's forgiveness and mercy. And then all the way to the left, not, not self-exalters, because I want to make a slightly different point here, but are the people who have a lot of good stuff from God. They're blessed and they know it. I think the idea in most people's head about how Christianity works is that you start all the way on the right, you become a Christian. You recognize you, your need for Jesus and, and for grace and forgiveness and so on. And then as you grow more and more in your faith, you slowly move more and more to the left and God's blessings become more and more abundant in your life. But honestly, that's not how it really works. You see, as you grow, you should really keep moving more and more to the right. And what happens as you do that? You get God, and that's the true blessing. And listen, I'm not suggesting that we aren't grateful for all the good things that God brings into our life. But the absolute, the real blessings in life are all the way on the right, in the presence of God in your life. And see, that's the exaltation that comes from humility. Listen, at the end of an incredible life, lived totally for God, I would have to say probably the greatest life in the Bible. Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1, verse 15, I am the worst sinner of all. He was just incredibly humble. So let me finish up here by saying that the first step to humility is admitting that you're proud. And I'm sure it's easy to listen to the pastor speak on Sunday morning, but not so much when you're arguing with your husband or your wife Monday morning, or maybe when God is convicting you to change, or maybe you're having issues at your job or in your family or with your friends, and someone in love is trying to say to you, you're the problem. Admit that you're proud. And so, as we finish up now, I want to suggest that why don't you take just one of these four issues and work on it this week? Maybe you ask yourself, what ambition can I give to God? Not give up, but give to God. Or whose needs can I notice? Or maybe you find yourself in that lower seat at work, or in your neighborhood, whatever. How can you honor God from where you are? How can you recognize that God has you where he wants you for a reason? Or maybe, at last, lastly, God's calling you to just trust him more, seek him more, rely on him just because of who he is.
He's God. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would take this word and make it a reality to all of our hearts. Help us to be the humble, loving, kind, giving, generous people you've called us to be. And we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.